Good morning, good morning, good morning. Man, this light, it looks like I don't have any face. There we go. No, I still don't look like I have a face. I'm kind of white. I mean, like, really bright. <laughs> no, that, that's worse. Okay. I, I look like I don't have no face. Sorry, this is live television in the progress. About, that's a lot better. At least people don't see this white face that's going on. i like to thank you. Good morning. It's Monday morning. I, uh, I was actually getting ready. Forgot to set my alarm. The jobs of many different facets that you do. Good morning. Good morning, Rhonda. We just came out of, we had a good weekend. Good morning, Debbie. We had a great weekend. We had our first women's conference, first women's tea of the year. It was wonderful. Everybody helped. People were, were touched. It was just beautiful. I turned my whole living room into a, 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 like a dining room and we served and we had tea and it was just a great, great Saturday. A lot of work, but a great Saturday. And, um, I love having tea. I love having the elegance of tea. I think tea is very elegant. It's very, um, soothing and warming and and a time to get to know everybody and and get to know your friends and get to know people and you can talk and and um you can talk and 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 it, it just gives you a a feeling of relaxation and not just the i mean my daughter has coffee while I have tea. So it's not a it's not what's in the cup. It's the act of having tea, of having tea. You know, it's it's like everybody comes together for corporate worship, but everybody's worshiping God their own way of how they worship him and telling them how they worship and and they they say the names of God. Of course, we have the leader that is giving us instructions and and leading us to the throne room. But it's still we we come together and we're worshiping God and we're all different rivers flowing together, making one large river that's coming about to set people free. You know, it's just not one person that can set a person free. Jesus is the only one. It says in Micah 2 13, it says that he is the breaker. He's the breaker with the anointing and he comes in and he breaks everything asunder and he breaks things up in your life. But he uses vessels to come about and bring his anointing in the earth today. And that's what we are all. We are all wells that come about together, that brings brings all the stuff together to bring deliverance to the people. You know, the, uh, the, the, the breaker anointing breaks all the, the yokes that are on you and literally breaks them asunder and causes them to be in grind up powder that falls about. But sometimes, you need people to come together and release their rivers in with you so that it can be broken completely. And so today I just want to talk about, we're on this journey with different women and stuff, and I just want to talk about a few people and a, a few things. I, I, um, I was asking God what to talk about, and, he, and he, t he told me we need to talk about prayer. We need to talk about praise. We need to talk about how people are 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 brought together and how a prayer and how um praise can help set people free and how you as a woman can actually birth certain things women were created to birth in the earth adam could not birth adam could only till the seed he can only give the seed. He can only work the ground. He can only protect the ground. He can only govern and provide and, 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 and protect those around. And then when the seed grows, he became a provider. 
But without a woman, he could not birth his vision or his seed in the, in the earth. All he could produce was earthly things that literally grew out of the dirt that meant nothing to him. It was just substance or su stuff that would sustain his physical body. And so in order to have a perpetual name in the earth, Adam needed a spouse. He needed a woman. And women are, are people that receive the seed. They allow the seed to grow and then they birth it into the kingdom. And so birthing it into the kingdom, you never lose that desire to birth. You know, the, in the Old Testament and even now, Women who are barren feel like they are not as much as a woman if they were able to bear children. That's why you see people that have surrogate mothers who carry children to full term. And that's why you see people that come about and uh, will adopt children. Hello, Pastor Koto from India. And so we, as women, are to birth the vision of God into existence. And so when we don't have that ability to birth, we will become, um, we will feel less of a woman, but we become people, women that, that feel like we don't have a purpose. We don't have a, um, a reason to be in the earth. And I'm not saying that you're supposed to stay pregnant and barefoot. What I'm trying, what I am getting across is, is that you have to have something that you need to birth into the kingdom. And so if you are married, then you need to birth whatever your husband is doing in the kingdom. And God's given you the ability to intercede. Most intercessors, in fact, it says in Jeremiah chapter 9, it talks about let's call the wailing women and teach the younger women how to wail. Let's teach the younger women how to intercede, the younger women how to cry out to God, how to pray and get things through. And in the book of Judges, I, I seen two certain scriptures or two certain women that frankly, I've read over it before, but I did, it just didn't leap out at me. And they don't even have names. They're just a certain woman and a certain daughter and they named the father. But here you have Israel that um, after Gideon had died, you know, Gideon was a judge. His son Abimelech rose up and he killed all his brothers except for the youngest. The youngest was alive and the youngest pronounced a curse on him. And he says that you, God will cause fire to come down on you and the men that have did this treachery to our brothers. So in the next chapter, you see people rise up against him. But in Judges 9, 53, it talks about there was a certain woman. So it means that there was a real woman. It wasn't just one that they were talking about. It was a certain woman that came about and that she threw a millstone and literally crushed his skull. And he was dying. He says, he tells his armor bearer, kill me so I will not die of disgrace that a woman said that a woman would kill me. Abimelech. And so I just want you to see, see that millstone actually means chariots are people that is a long rider. So she was up in the tower of where they were and she seen him and she seen her opportunity and she cast that millstone or that uh, tile upon him and, and crushed his head, cracked his head. And so here it is. He takes and he, he um, crash, crushes his head and so what happens is, is that he w dies. That is the same thing that women do when they pray. They cast that millstone. They cast that, that, that stone or that arrow in prayer that pierces the enemy of right where he is and takes him out at the head. And it causes a death in that situation that you're going through. But you need to know how to pinpoint how to pray that particular 
um, point that you're trying to get across. Now you say, how do you pray to make sure that when you cast your, your, uh, your, your, your stone or when you, you hit that arrow when, and going towards the mark, the best way to know that you are hitting the mark and that angels would be dispatched in your behalf because angels, as in Hebrews chapter one and two are given us as ministering angels as ministering spirits to do what we say and in he and and psalms 103 i believe it's verse 20 it talks about that they hear the word and they will act upon the they only act upon the word of god so your angels are standing there waiting for you to say the correct word for them to go out and do what you say so what is the correct word the correct word is the word of God. It's given to you in 66 books of this Bible. And there's words and there are things, are, are, are words and there are scriptures and verses that God has given you in order to cause, to come about, to make the cause that you are fighting, your weapon that you need to fight that battle is coming about as you begin to speak the word. And as you speak the word, then God dispatches his angels and God looks over his word to perform it so it will not come void back to you. The reason you have unanswered prayers at times is because you pray, oh God, please answer me. Answer me in this situation. Oh God, please take care of this problem. God, God, God's not going to, he doesn't... I'm not saying that he won't answer it, but usually he only answers what his word says. What does his word say? If you need healing, it says in Exodus 15 verse um, 26, I believe it says that he would not put the diseases of the Egyptians or the Egyptians represent the world in that passage. He will not put the, the diseases of the world upon you for he is the Lord God, your healer. And in Isaiah 53 verses four and five, it says that he by his stripes, we are healed or we are going to be healed. And then in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says we are healed. So when you need healing, you need to find every scripture about healing. And you need to let that become part of your spirit. So it becomes revelation and rhema. And you speak it and declare it over your life. Because it says in Proverbs 4.20 that his word is health to our flesh and to our bones. And so it brings health to us. And so as you speak the word, as you cast that towel to break the enemy's head and his stronghold, because see, the head is what's going to think. It's what's going to give orders. It's what's going to cause things to come to pass. The rest of the body just does what the head says it's going to do. So by her hitting it with the tile and crushing the skull, it can no longer think about what um, plan it was going to have. It can no longer put in operation what it was going to do or execute it because the head was broken. The head could not think anymore except that it just didn't want to be put to shame. And so the head was killed by someone close to him. But this is the same thing that God wants you to see. You can, you can wound the enemy by your word, by your word and prayer and toss it. And if you don't know how to pray, if you don't have a scripture, if you don't have an understanding of the situation, God has blessed you with his Holy Spirit. And if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, then um, message me. I will give you scriptures on being baptized in the Holy Spirit because your prayer language is what gives you the ability to understand and comprehend what God is saying to you. It says in Jude verse 20, it says, build yourself up in the most holy faith. Pray in the Spirit. So praying in the Spirit, speaking in tongues, begins to 
build your, your spirit man up. It brings about what the word of God is that you have instilled in your heart and it causes it to bubble up and come out of you because the word of God is what Jesus is inside of your spirit. See, the word says in, for, in John that, the, that the, the word of God, we beheld the word and it's still becoming flesh. How does it become flesh? You take the word, you read the word, you meditate over the word, you pray in the spirit over the word. And it becomes a part of you. So even when you start to answer someone, you will give the answer from the word. You will think like the word. You would have biblical thinking and a biblical worldview. The problem with our church people today and our, our church today in general is they don't think like the word of God. They have not let, according to Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What is the mind of God? The mind of God is what he said from Genesis to revelation. That is his mind. And what he has expounded upon it in teachings of prophets and, and apostles and teachers and pastors and evangelists. It is what he has said and it is what he has expounded to you. You are the same. You, the, you know, it says in the word that we should ask for one gift. The one gift everyone should ask for, and that's the spirit of prophecy. That doesn't mean that makes you a prophet if you prophesy, but you should ask for the spirit of prophecy. Why? Because that means that you have the ability to hear from God for your situation. And if you can hear from God, you can prophesy to that situation and cause it to come to the to what God has caused it to be. Because in your mouth holds the power of life and death. The thing is, is that we speak more death. We speak in the realm of fear and doubt instead of in the realm of faith. In the realm of faith, there is no boundaries in the realm of faith. The only boundaries that God has set is what he puts in his word. His word is our boundaries. His word has set the, the, the precedence, the precedence of what we're supposed to do. You know, it says in Ezekiel 47, it says that there was a river that flowed from the throne of God. And the river talks about that there's banks. So that means there's boundaries and there's trees all along those banks. And those trees is what gives life. And it says that we are trees of righteousness planted by the river. So we take our substance from the spirit, from the river of God, and we suck it up through our roots. But if your roots are not grounded completely in the word and completely in the soul, then you will top over. You know, here in Louisiana, we have many, many old oak trees. And when Hurricane Katrina comes or when a hurricane comes, a lot of those oak trees will still be standing because their roots go down very, very deep. That's how you're supposed to be. Your root system is supposed to be so deep in God, so deep in the word that when trials and tribulation comes, you can be tossed to and fro, but it will not cause you to get uprooted from where you are. Are. And your roots have to be in the word of God. You know, it says in Matthew chapter 7, there was a wise man and a foolish man that built his house. The wise man built his house upon the rock. In other words, his foundation was stable. It was in the rock. It was put down and it was made stable. Here in Louisiana, in order to have a stable house, we have to drive pollens. It's big, long trees that we hit bottom and it'll go down sometimes 40, 50 feet so that that house is made stable and will not sink into the ground. And so we have to be stable in the word. And sometimes that takes years. Sometimes that's a process. It depends upon how fast you want to grow in the word of God. See, women, there is no limitations upon you. Men, there's no limitations upon you. How fast do you want to grow in God is how fast you read and you come to the understanding of the word. See, I don't know everything. 
And people tell me I have a vast knowledge of the word, but I don't know everything. I have, I do not, I have just a glimpse of what this word offers, but I do my best to hide it in my heart and to make my foundation stable so that I can be a tree and that others can pick from my fruit and see my leaves and get healing in their lives. Because learning the word of God is a process. And when you think you know it, there's something else that's going to happen again and that God's going to reveal something new. And I just want to, I, I, I know we're coming time for uh, me to close, but I want to leave this with you. It says in, in Psalms 23 verse 5, it says that he prepares a table in the midst of our enemies, but he anoints our head with oil. And see, God wants to give us new, fresh oil every day. But when the shepherd would take and he would anoint the sheep's head with oil, what he was doing was he was taking that oil and letting it run down because sheep would let flies come and they would lay maggots in their eyes. And so they couldn't see out their eyes. They could only see the maggots or the flies. And flies represent the enemy. It represents the Satan and Satan tries to come and tries to lay mountains in our eyes that are really little bitty blimps in the whole grand scheme of things. And God comes and he takes and he gives us fresh oil every day as in Psalms 92 verse 10. And he puts that fresh oil over us and over our eyes so that we are not going to see the enemy's plans for that day and that he washes it that all literally runs and washes out our eyes and causes us to begin to see who God is that's why David says I will magnify the Lord and I will exalt his name for eternity I will do this I will bless the Lord at all times why because he is a good shepherd I shall not want and he makes me where I don't have to see what the enemy is always doing before me because if you magnify God then God can be magnified in your life on a daily basis and actually answer all your prayers you know prayers are answered through praise and through prayer. And in and and in First Timothy, I believe First Timothy two, one through three, we are to offer thanksgiving first, then our supplications and our petitions, pray for the government, and then offer thanksgiving again. God's always about thanksgiving and prayer. Why? Because He inhabits our praises and wants to come and sup with us. Now, I want to pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these women, Father God. I thank you, Father, for the men that have joined. And Father God, I release a, an anointing upon them to break every yoke. Everything that's hindered them, I break it now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I ask that you come in and just wash them over with your anointing. Clean out their eyes, Father God, so that they can only see who you are and what you can do. Because with you, nothing is impossible. And Father, today, because it's Monday, Lord, we lift up our government to you. We lift up our government as, at the federal level from the president to the vice president to all the House and Senate members. And Father, we ask for wisdom for them, Father God. That's the wisdom of Solomon. Lord, we lift up all our law enforcement, Father, that you protect them and give them a hedge of protection right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up the governor of this state and for our our lieutenant governor and all the other uh, elected officials in the state of Louisiana and Lord we ask that you give them wisdom Father God and Lord all the government Father we ask and we pray a hedge of protection round about them we plead the blood of Jesus over them and Lord for any of them that don't know you as Savior Father we ask that you send workers in the labor in the field to labor among them to bring them to the knowledge of your son Jesus Christ so that they can be a 
righteous judgment in the earth, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, for all our people in leadership in the body of Christ, Father God. Lord, that you grace them with your wisdom, that you give them knowledge and understanding, that you open up their eyes to enlighten them to what you hold spiritually of all wisdom and knowledge. Lord, we pray a hedge of protection round about them. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you you are the one that has set them in the body, Father, to bring about this great move of Christ. And Lord, every false leader, every false prophet, Lord, we ask that you cause them to come down in the name of Jesus and you reveal their plots in Jesus' name. And lastly, Father, we pray for the nation of Israel, Lord, that you come and you bring, open their eyes of their understanding that they would see that you are the great Messiah that already paid the price for them, Father God. And Father, I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. And Father, I lift up every person under the sound of my voice. Father, I ask that, Father, that you give them the eyes of the understanding for the spiritual gifts and wisdom that you have bestowed upon them in Christ, in Jesus name. And Father God, I thank you for this, Father. I thank you, Father, that you're working out deals and you're working out, out favor for your people, Father God. Lord, I pray for everyone that needs a financial blessing. I break the spirit of mammon. I break the spirit of poverty right now in the name of Jesus. And I release your prosperity upon your people. And Father God, I ask that as their soul prospers, as their mind begins to understand what you are doing in the earth and how you operate in the word that their mind will begin to prosper and will begin to go forth and your spirit and everything will come in line in the name of Jesus and father God I thank you Lord that you're bringing healing to those that need healing for the healing of emotions for the healing of physical healing for the healing of relationships father God I thank you for this father and Lord I thank you Lord that you will cleanse our land of all immorality right now in Jesus name and Lord for every preacher's child that is out there father I pray a hedge of protection about them Lord I put a wall about them I plead the blood of Jesus over them Lord those that have backslid those that are not walking in your covenant right now father God that have left the umbrella father I ask that you send someone that will minister to them a worker in the field to bring them back to foe Oh, Father God, I ask that you minister to them in their night seasons, Father God. And begin to call them back to you, Father. And begin to call them back to you. For you've given them such an anointing, such a mandate in the earth, Father. And Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the children that you have set. Because, Lord, there are mighty arrows in the earth, Father, that goes forth from us. And, Lord, I thank you for this now in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, I ask that you give them wisdom and understanding that, Lord, no matter what they went through as a child, no matter what they've seen in the ministry, <coughs> that Lord, it's all worth the price that has to be paid. And Lord, I thank you for this, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you're strengthening all husbands and wives in the ministry and that you're putting a hedge of protection around that ministry and around that family. And Lord, I speak growth to the church. I speak growth to the church that daily they are added to the church. Lord, give us a mindset to be witnesses in the earth to go out and win those to the body, Father. And Lord, I thank you for this, Father God. Lord, I give you glory for it, Father. And Father God, I just, I just praise you and I just give you honor. And I thank you for being such a loving Father. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. As we go on this week, God's laid upon my heart about prayer. And so I will be doing a little bit more teaching about prayer and about praise and how we can make our arrows to be healthy and how we can make our arrows to shoot straight shooting where it needs to be. Don't forget to share the broadcast with others. Don't forget to invite your other friends. 
I thank everyone from Vivian to Rhonda to Debbie to I see my son Micah popped in. If you can remember, Micah and his wife is going to Argentina and then they're going back to South Africa for a few months if you can keep them in prayer. And um, and for every other missions missionary that is out there. I like to thank y'all for joining us. Tomorrow we'll be back at the same time. I'll be here at 1030. And, um, but don't forget to, to share. And thank you so much. And God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 1030. Remember, your heavens operation for promises of eternity in the earth. That's what God has given you. Hope in Jesus' name. God bless.